The early part of 2016 saw a risk-off attitude to investing take gold up to levels not seen since March 2014. But since the highs, as at mid-December, it's retraced to the Fibonacci level of 76.4% support. How has this affected gold ETFs and what now for 2017 for the ETF market for gold specifically? James Butterfield joins us now from ETF Securities. James, welcome. Hi. First of all, let's look back at 2016 and, and work out what happened and, and what the flows were in the ETF market. So in the early part of 2016, people realised that or there was a belief that the world could fall into recession. Then it led investors to think, OK, the Fed's not going to hike rates this year, or at least in the first half. That, ten, that weakened the dollar, and the dollar and gold have a very inverse relationship to each other. And therefore, uh, the, dollar, the, do, the dollar fell and uh, gold rallied. Um, and we saw very strong inflows. Up until uh, June, we saw inflows of around $3 billion. Then when Brexit occurred, we saw an additional billion. So at one point in the year, we were up in gold $4.1 billion in uh, ETF securities, gold ETF. Uh, but since then, clearly things have, have, have weakened. We've seen um, uh, the Donald Trump victory, a real surprise to us. We believed that it would be quite positive for gold. But ultimately, it was quite negative. People put much greater weighting on the growth, on the positive growth prospects in, uh, through Trump cutting taxes, etc. And that led to people believing that the Fed would be much more hawkish, and I, I uh, push up interest rates. The dollar rallied as a consequence, and, and, and gold sold off. What about the, the flows themselves within this, the shorts and the longs? Um, is there any pattern that's emerging now as we go into the back end of 2016? Yeah. We saw quite considerable positions into, into longs um, uh, this year, but really no one buying shorts. So this really puzzled us. From 2007 to 2013, as the gold price was rising, we saw strong inflows into long positions, but also an equal number of inflows into short positions, presumably as investors uh, uh, felt the, the price was too high, they were adding on to short positions, rightly or wrongly. Mm. Um, this time round, though, we've seen strong inflows into gold long positions, but only, we've only seen $87,000 of inflows into gold sh short positions. Something is happening in the market that's making people not want to buy shorts and hold on to their, uh, uh, predominantly hold on to their, their long positions. And we believe it's partly because there's a lot of uncertainty created by Donald Trump. Whilst it's been very positive for equity markets and risk assets in general this year, there's still uncertainty about can he truly enact many of his policies. And don't forget, in Europe, 70% by GDP, if you include, if you include Italy, uh, have uh, elections next year. So that's the Netherlands, France, Germany, Czech Republic, and possibly Italy, and maybe even the UK. So there's a lot of political uh, instability. And don't forget, in these countries, the populists are either leading in the polls or gaining rapidly, such as in Germany. It's that kind of political instability, coupled with the uncertainty from, from Trump, it is likely to it is the likely reason why investors aren't shorting gold. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at the the, the, the <coughs> price of gold because I think this is this is well illustrated. If we took a, a, a two-year chart here, I mean, I, I was talking here about this uh, Fibonacci retracement, which we've got from the the swing low that we had at the back end of last year. If you if you draw out from there, you can see that we are now at this uh, 76 um, point point four percent support as we what, mid December. And um, what, what's your what's your call on gold at this level? I mean, it, does does it give you the inclination that we could well see uh, this, this move lower? To me, it's possible. Uh, we don't tend to look so much at, at technicals. We tend to look at uh, maybe what's happened in history. So this sure. time last year, after the rate hike, actually sentiment, CFTC future positioning, really deteriorated. If you apply the same theory to today, which was actually very similar in many ways, we could see sentiment to, to continue to deteriorate. It does suggest that actually gold could trough out, would like to trough out around 1070. Uh, that would be the ultimate, we're not saying it'll get there, that, that would be the ultimate uh, buying opportunity, I think, if it hits that sort of levels. But we're already seeing a bit of a bounce back in, in, in the gold price today, uh, just after the Fed rate hike. And historically, actually, gold tends to sell off on the rumour of a rate hike, and people tend to buy back gold uh, after the events actually occurred. Uh, it's quite the inverse to the dollar in that respect. Mm. OK, uh, let's, let's, let's keep on the focus of 2017 and where things go. You're talking about the, the, the risks that are out there. Um, there is the expectation, potentially, as well, we could well see more upside for the dollar, which, as you 
you're saying, potentially could well see uh, more uh, pressure for gold. Um, how are you positioned at ETF for, for, for 2017 in terms of flows and, and, and client activity? So we've just seen uh, several clients, uh, about $100 million of inflows into um, uh, short dollar, long euro. So there are a portion of investors out there who now believe the rally in the dollar's done. Um, and we are of a similar view in the research team. We believe that um, it's, it's, don't forget, in, in, in uh, Q4 this year, we've seen a 7.6% rally in the dollar. That's extraordinary. That's very, very strong. Compared to last year, it was only 4%. And last year, many people were talking about how much damage a 4% rise in the dollar will do to corporate earnings. That's a dollar shock in some respects. And this time around, the, the dollar shock's almost double that of last year. So. Early next year, we'll probably start to see in earnings season when, it, when it, they companies start uh, publishing their results in February, uh, that the dollar is a big problem. So that's one thing we should be looking out for, is that, that dollar weakness. And, and anything else and in terms of the things you're looking for which could stir activity? Yeah, th think about Trump. Can he truly enact some of his policies? Take his infrastructure spending plan, for instance. There's a white paper he created. It suggests he should... Uh, he's, he's highlighted that he wants to increase uh, spending on infrastructure by $160 billion and then leverage that up five times. Leveraging up government finances is something unheard of. So can he genuinely get that push through Congress? Whilst he does have control of Congress as well, another way, another thing in, in terms of increasing government spending, he'll need, to, he'll need to raise the debt ceiling. And in the first quarter, we'll see evidence of whether he genuinely can or not. The Republicans are, have historically been very resistant to increasing that debt ceiling. So if that's the case that Donald Trump can't really enact his infrastructure plans, can't really fully enact his, uh, his spending plans to help stimulate growth, that will probably mean a, a much more dovish Fed than what we heard of uh, uh, this month. Gold positive. Yes. Potentially. Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> James, look, thanks so much indeed uh, for joining us. James Butterfield there uh, from ETF Securities taking a look at 2017 and the ETF market for gold.